Greetings everyone, I'm Stefan and today we're going to be taking a look at a build that can get you a Eucominopolis in your early 2230s. This build is quite strong by itself, but it also involves some strategies that I'll be showcasing throughout this video to make sure you can actually stay on target and get that research production up and running. After all, this build is all about two things. A, we gotta get the anti-gravity engineering, and B, we gotta get 20,000 minerals. As long as we can get that, we can get a Eucominopolis up and running relatively easily. However, getting to that point, especially very early on, is quite difficult. So let's take a look at the build itself and let's jump into a game to showcase how it works. First, let's take a look at our government. In this build, we're running two very powerful civics, technocracy and meritocracy. Technocracy is here to essentially give us an extra scientist uh, in the form of a science director and also get us some unity so we can actually do traditions without sacrificing building slots. Meritocracy is going to be very helpful early on in getting more tech out and is also going to help us out later once we get the Ecumenopolis that we can actually, you know, mass produce alloys. As far as our ethics, we are running Fanatic Materialist just because it's required and it's also the best fit for the build. 10% research speed, can't beat that. We're also running Pacifist. Now normally I don't run this ethic, uh, it is highly restrictive in your diplomatic options. However, it's very good for this build for its economical aspect. The 5 stability it gives is quite nice, but it also gives you access to an edict that gives an additional 10% happiness across all your planets. 10% happiness translates into roughly 7 stability, so 12 stability from a single ethic is quite decent. And since we're not planning on going to war super early, uh, it's completely fine. Later on, we're going to be able to do liberation wars and just, you know, liberate and integrate our fellow empires. Now as far as our species goes, we are of course running Intelligent Natural Engineers. This gives us a 25% increase in engineering output as well as 10% in the two other categories. This is essential for getting tech as early as possible. Otherwise, we're going for a bit of a weird trait in volatile expressions. Normally these traits are quite bad. Uh, you don't really get enough resources out of each pop to justify them. However, in our case, they're very useful. We're going to be able to buy moats on the market and do the Volatile Clearance Edict, which will allow us to clear blockers significantly faster and cheaper. Since we're playing as a Lithoid, uh, we're also going to get 4 tile blockers of our Lithoid pops. This will more than make up for the reduced pop growth speed on Lithoids, uh, because we're getting 4 pops at the start, and we're only really losing 2 pops uh, to the reduced pop growth speed in the first 20 years of the game. Otherwise, there's really no other bonuses to being Lithoids, uh, besides maybe the habitability. Our guaranteed habitable planets are going to be slightly more habitable. <laughs> Yay! For negative traits, we're going with the normal Deviance Unruly. I would like to go with non-adaptive, but since we're Lithoids, we can't. As far as our origin goes, of course, we're going to be taking Remnants. So let's take a look at our galaxy settings. Um, there's going to be the default settings. Of course, Xena compatibility off, and we're going to want to go for a land clearance governor, if at all possible. Let's see. Yep, we have an environmental engineer as an option. That's good enough, and that's a pretty, uh, pretty nice little cluster. We'll only be taking two or maybe three systems, depending on uh, dig sites and planets. Otherwise, uh... Mess scientist, we can get a spark of genius later. That's fine. You do want an industry scientist, if at all possible, but a spark of genius works just fine. Uh, before we go into research, let me just show you some of the other stirring things to do. Research is going to be a very complicated subject uh, with this build. Of course, first and foremost, clear design on our corvettes and get some alloys from that. That's very good for getting some early resources. Uh, otherwise, we're going to want to go ahead and get a science lab up running as soon as possible. And make sure to replace your administrative office, uh, then your ally foundry, then the empty building slot, and then go from there and just spam research labs in all your available slots, except for maybe your civilian industries. As far as our science ships, uh, the first one is going to go and assist research. Otherwise, we're going to want to go and maybe have four science ships uh, out there exploring the near space, and then going out to maybe find curators or artisans. 
Uh, those two help very significantly. As far as policies go, we have to go for Isolationist, for Extra Unity and Admin Cap. The Malices don't really matter. And as far as trade policy goes, we're going to go for Consumer Benefits. CGs are going to be quite a concern uh, if you're trying to rush a Ecomonopolis, because you're going to have to Tech Rush. And Tech Rush requires CGs, and you can only make CGs by replacing some of your research with civilian industries. So we're in a bit of a pickle there. Uh, we might have to start buying consumer goods later on. Now as far as research goes, I actually have a graphic for this. Basically what this is, is a tiered tech tree. We want to get six technologies of tier one, which is the top tier, in order to unlock uh, tier two, which is the one right below it, and then six of those to unlock tier three. Tier three is where anti-gravity engineering is, and as you can see from the decision, that is exactly what we need to be able to get a Ecomonopolis. So how do we go about this? Well, there's a method called tech beelining. I made a video about this a long time ago, but the basic of it is this. You want to research techs to unlock the fewest possible techs uh, from it. For example, if you unlock exotic gas refineries, that won't unlock any techs and will be perfect for us to uh, go for at tier 2. We want to have as few techs as possible when we actually unlock tier 3 so that we can get the highest chances possible of getting anti-gravity engineering. By the time we get to anti-gravity engineering, we're going to have two extra technology uh, options. One from our discovery tree and one from our physics tree. So we're going to have five options and really if we have 10 techs floating around, anti-gravity engineering has a pretty decent chance to show up. If not, we just take the lowest cost tech and re-roll until we get it. So if we take a look at this uh, tech selection and we take a look at our tech tree, we can see that none of these options are really good. All of these are circles. Ceramic metal materials will unlock a technology in tier two. That'll unlock a technology in tier three. Powered exoskeletons will unlock more tier one techs, which is not necessarily bad because uh, it doesn't tend to lead to tier 2 techs. Afterburners, on the other hand, will get us another tier 3 tech once we get there. We want to minimize the amount of tier 3 techs, if at all possible, so with this tech draw, we're going to go for powered exoskeletons. Uh, everything that goes on in the other tech trees, basically just go for whatever you desire, um, just whatever helps you out most. Now at this point, we're pretty much ready to begin the game squeeze out every little bit of efficiency out of our pops. Uh, we are still going to want to go for the crime lord deal, so we're going to unemploy, take over one day, get the crime lord deal, and then hire him back. Uh, otherwise, speaking of pops, you do want to set their species right to be academic privilege. We're going to go for that, and with crime lord deal, we have only one more early optimization to go for, which is uh, Peace Festivals. Plus 10% happiness is quite good. So now that we have taken apart our fleet, we can also take apart some of the fleet modules on the station. And we're probably not going to need the trade hub. It'll only consume uh, upkeep. Yeah, you, you really got a minmax to, uh, <laughs> to get the Ecomonopolis early. And now I build a science ship, and then a few later maybe. Uh, our leader is very good, much better than those I start with normally. Uh, so hopefully that'll make up for relatively mess scientists and leaders across the board. Now we sit here, preferably on normal or fast speed, and just uh, move along. Nice, we got our first archaeological dig site. And it's anyone home. Now, speaking of dig sites, there is one dig site that could potentially just turn this challenge around for anyone. Uh, that's called Moon Bump. Moon Bump is a relatively common dig site that can potentially get you anti-gravity engineering. If you get that dig site, all you have to do is focus on minerals and just get a Ecumenopolis. Uh, right around year 25, I think, would be possible. Just dump all your resources into minerals production and you should be good to go. Otherwise, we're just going to be using these dig sites to build up uh, minor artifacts to then sell them for a lot of money. That is going to be one of the ways we boost our uh, economy 
while going for a full-on tech rush. As far as our first version goes, we're going to want to go for domination to get that uh, clear blocker cost reduced by 33%. Complete. Otherwise, uh, we might want to go for workplace motivators a later on, has been surveyed. but we need to do the discovery tree first for all its juicy research bonuses. Now at this point, we have a system surveyed and we actually have a dig site in there. So we're going to send our construction ship to claim that as soon as we can. Uh, getting that dig site and getting those minor artifacts can be a very, very good early game boost. And you're going to want to aggressively expand towards them uh, to get the most use out of them. Remember though, you will still need 200 influence to do the Restore Monopolis decision. But by that time, you should have that stockpiled. Um, as you will have probably explored your nearby space. Also, now that we have replaced our alloy foundry, complete. we can go ahead and uh, switch our economic policy to civilian economy. This will squeeze out just a tad few uh, more consumer goods out. Otherwise, we are identified. about ready to go for the mass clearance. We want to get the clearing out as soon as possible so that we can uh, get all those techs as early as possible. So at this point, we're going to go uh, to our Leaders tab, hire that Environmental Engineer. And we're also going to sell off some resources in order to buy uh, some volatile moats. The first thing that we're going to want to do is clear the Sprawling Slump, then either go for Ruin Arcologies or the Lithoid Molonolith. Uh, both of these are quite cheap, uh, but I think I'll go for an extra billing slot for the extra research lab first and foremost and then rush these Renarchologies down as well. Now normally I wouldn't want to expand into random systems, but this one is quite juicy. I think we're going to still build a outpost, and then uh, only build another one once we find our second guaranteed habitable. We're going to want to colonize those after all, because even though uh, it does cost quite a bit upfront to go ahead and colonize your habitables, you will get an additional uh, technology blocker of Ruin Arcology. So once we can get some minor artifacts and afford some colony ships, we're going to go for that and go for colony. We did get an engineering tech right there, Research which is actualized. quite awesome. Let's go for that and uh, hammer that out. Complete. In fact, we might want to go for robots first. That option is going to still stay there. And uh, this way, we ensure that we get all our robotic techs out of the way there. Potential markets uh, to make sure completed. we don't get droids and other techs, we're not going to go for colonial centralization. As you can see in the tech tree uh, that I hopefully will pull up, uh, colonial centralization is required uh, to get droids. And without it, uh, we don't have robots and droids clogging up our tree. Quite nice. Also, since we did clear that, we can get some money, money, money and do a couple things. Uh, first thing we want to do market survey complete. is go for 400 consumer goods and enact uh, distribute luxury goods. This will completely fix our amenities issues and it means we can have less clerks working our jobs. Now here's a conundrum. We could go for extra research, which would uh, increase our research speed for other research. Or we go for this, which is a required tech. Then we're going to play it safe and go for weather control systems, because we absolutely need this tech uh, to be able to advance to the next one, which is anti-gravity engineering. Otherwise, we are well on our way to our uh, sixth research lab, and it's going to provide us a lot of science. We're already at 298, which is completed. quite good for year 8 um, in Stellaris. 
Oh, that's nice. And uh, that is why you want to go ahead and uh, survey your near systems and research any anomalies. You can get random good things like happiness plus 10%. That'll massively boost your uh, output. Research actualized. All right, so you desert housing. Research actualized. Now, this will unlock Vortex, but since this is minerals and we desperately do need minerals, this is fine. This is just fine. We can also now get Technological Ascendancy. There's not even really a choice between Technological Ascendancy versus the other ones, because the best other thing we can get is One Vision, which won't help us at all in technology. Research actualized. A rare Crystal Manufacturing will actually unlock the upgrade to the uh, Consumer Goods Building, which we don't want. But we don't really have any other good options, so I'd rather have a tier 1 building locked than a tier 3. Research actualized. Alright, uh, research is probably the best option here. Go for that. Research actualized. So I'll go for thrusters. And then we still have the reroll. Research actualized. Alright. There we have it, anti-gravity engineering, and if we were to unlock destroyers previously, we would have also been able to unlock cruisers by this point. Cruisers are near 21, or 22 when you finish them. That's pretty insane by itself, so you can use the strategies used in this video. You just rush technology like crazy. Research actualized. Right. Now that we have anti-gravity engineering and 20,000 minerals, almost exact. And go ahead and restore your monopolies. And because I just built those two civilian industries by queuing them up and then shuffling them around, we are no longer dependent on our monthly trade deals. We can safely cancel that. And if the month takes over, we can see that our economy is doing great. 500 something research, near 23, Ecomnopolis ready to go. This is a solid build. Now, while I will not be playing this build past this point, I'm pretty sure it's obvious uh, which way things are headed. We are sitting here with a stable economy, extremely powerful research, and a Ecomonopolis coming up in 10 years. Uh, we have also done some colonization. Uh, obviously, we're going to be doing a bit more of that right now. Uh, taking some of these systems, colonizing planets, and building up a population to actually place our capital Ecomonopolis. Now, this Pacific Empire has been min-maxed extensively, uh, so your times might not be as good as 2223, uh, and also depending on your luck, you may not get as much resources from matter artifacts as I did. But if you go ahead, survey your nearby systems, and go for those relic sites, you will be able to get a significant amount of resources from that, and transition those resources into tech, and uh, get anti-gravity engineering. But otherwise, there is one thing to point out about this build, and that is that, uh, if you couldn't tell already, this is something I came up with for a challenge of trying to get your Ecumenopolis as early as possible. Uh, obviously, if you're playing this in a normal Grand Emerald game or in a multiplayer scenario, you're probably going for a bit more alloys, you probably wouldn't be replacing your first alloy foundry, for example, and you'd be building up a bit more stations. However, even with that little bit of buildup, you will still be able to get a Eucomonopolis right before year 2240. And a year 2240 Eucomonopolis is still quite strong, especially if you can manage your empire to be nice and defensible up to that point. You can check out some of my other build videos and uh, see the things I do to normally prepare an empire uh, to be pretty defensible. Otherwise, uh, I'd like to thank Llama Tick for actually coming up with this challenge and uh, <laughs> driving me to create this wonderful, wonderful empire. But anyways, then I'll do it for today. If you like this video, please do consider leaving a like, always helps. And uh, if you have any other build ideas, you can go ahead and share them in the comments or in my Discord. Link is down below. Anyways, thank you all for watching, special thanks to my Patreons, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.